Hi, and welcome to Bytes and Bits. If you've been following my channel, you know I've been doing a bit of playing around with retro consoles, such as the PS3 sitting behind me there, and some of these handheld devices. Now, whenever you're playing around with these, um, especially if you're going to be hacking them and installing some custom firmware on them, you're going to need to be using some SD cards and USB drives that are formatted as FAT32 drives. So in this video, I just want to go through that process in a bit more detail so that I'm, when, when we go to do the hacking videos, you can refer to this and find out exactly what you need to do. So let's get straight into it and start formatting some of our USB drives. To begin with then, I'll take you through how you actually go through the process of creating and formatting your drives as SAT32. Then after that, if you're still interested, uh, I'll just go through the basic ideas of why we're doing certain things and why we choose certain values. So if you are simply formatting a USB drive or an SD card and, and you haven't been doing anything unusual with that card beforehand, probably the best package to use is something called Rufus. So if you head across to rufus.ie, you'll get to this page. And if you scroll down a wee bit on here, you'll see that there are some downloads. Now, again, this is a Windows only program. Um, if you are using a Mac or Linux, then you will have to find some other uh, piece of software that will let you format those. Uh, but for, for Windows, then uh, we need to download just the standard x64 version here. So I'm just going to download that onto my hard drive. And once that's downloaded, that, that is all we need to do. So if I go across to that folder, and um, you'll see I have my executable file sitting in there. All I need to do is to run that file. And once that pops up, um, we just have been go through these boxes. So we start at the top here. We need to select which device we want to format. So you can see it's listing only my USB drives, um, which so it keeps it safe from us actually formatting any of our um, system drives. So I have a 32 gigabyte USB stick plugged in here. We then want to say what we want to do with this. So Rufus can be used for a number of tasks, but we just simply want to make a non-bootable disk here. So we're going to leave it as MBR, uh, and then we come down to our formatting options here. So we need to give it a label. So I could just do this as a test one. It will automatically um, so select your FAT32. So again, we can see here there are a number of different uh, formatting options. But again, we want to go for an FAT32. Our cluster size then, um, really I'm going to give you two values here. So if you are using up to a 32 gigabyte um, drive, you want to use a 16 kilobyte cluster size. If you're going 32 kilobyte or more than 32 um, gigabytes, then you want to use a 32 kilobyte cluster size. And again, I'll, I'll tell you why that is um, after the, the actual doing it part of the set of, the, of this video. So I'm going to leave that then at the default of 16 kilobytes for my 32 gigabyte drive. And then I just simply click on start. So once that's um, ready to go, it will just say that obviously we are going to completely format this drive. So all the data on it is going to be destroyed. But if that's OK, just click that and the formatting process will start. So once that's finished, uh, we can click on close for that. And we should then find that if I come into my um, Windows system, I have my um, drive sitting there. If I right click on it and go to properties, we should then see that this is an FAT32 USB drive um, and we have 30 gigabytes of free space. So that gives us our, our first version of creating our FAT32 drive. Now again, um, Rufus is great if you are using just a, a simple SD card or USB drive. And what I mean by that is that you haven't been using it for doing things like setting up Raspberry Pis or Linux machines or, or, or some other system where you will have been formatting the drive in a more unusual way. One of the problems when we do that is that some of the partitions and the way in which the drive is set up can't be removed by some normal um, formatting software. So we do need to use something called a partition manager. Uh, and that's what we're going to come across next. And I'll show you how to use that. 
So my preferred partition manager for Windows then is this mini tool partition wizard. And again, there is a free version. So if you search for mini tool partition wizard free, it should come up as the top result. And again, I'll put a link to that in the description down below. But basically this then lets you come over here and the free version is, is absolutely fine for what we want to do with it. So we simply need to download that and then save that onto our hard drive. So once that's downloaded, we can open up um, the file location. And then we just simply need to double click on this installer and install that software. Now obviously I've already got that installed. So let me just boot that up and we'll see how that application works. Now obviously this is a Windows only application. So if you are on a Mac or a Linux machine, um, you will have just simply have to find a, a suitable partition manager program for that platform. But in um, Partition Wizard then, uh, once we open it up, it will then give us an overview of our entire storage system. Uh, and this is a very powerful piece of software, so we do need to be um, a little bit careful on what we do. So we can see here that this is, this is my main computer here, and I have a number of disk drives attached to it. So disk 1, 2 and 3 are the hard drive units attached to my system. And then down below here you can see I have disk 4, which is a little 4 gigabyte USB drive. Now I have been using that drive for some um, Raspberry Pi, and you can see there that we have a number of um, divisions in this, and these are called partitions, which are basically sort of how we divide up the storage space on that USB drive. So you can see that there is a boot filing system here, which is formatted as an FAT32. We have an extension 4, um, which is a Linux based um, partition, and then we have some unallocated space at the end of it here. So this is what I mean by the disk drive being formatted in a more complex way. So what I want to do here is I want to make sure that I completely clean this drive and then reformat it before I start using it in, in my retro piece and in my retro consoles and so on. So the way that this particular um, software works is that I can right click on my disk here and I can say that I want to delete all partitions. So that will take all, all of the preset storage space on my, um, hard, on my USB drive off. And you can see there, it's now cleared all those um, divisions, all those partitions, and we now have our, our unallocated space um, on that drive. Now, with this particular um, piece of software, what it does, it doesn't actually perform the operations straight away. It simply now queues them in a sort of job list. So once I'm happy that I've got all of my operations correct and I'm working on the correct drive, then I can then um, apply that and it will go through and perform all those operations. And the, and the most important bit here is that because we do have access to all of our drives, obviously if I was to delete all the partitions on my drive here, which is my main Windows drive, that that will really completely bugger up my computer. Um, so do make sure that you are very careful and make sure that you are doing the operations on your USB drive or your SD card. So once we've cleaned the drive, we then need to come in here and we need to then create our new partition, which is going to be our FAT32 file system. So again, I want to create a primary um, partition. That just means it's the, it's the main partition on this drive. It needs to be formatted as FAT32. The cluster size then, um, the, the software will automatically choose the correct cluster size for you. But again, if you do want to set that yourselves, again, as we said before, if it's up to a 32 gigabyte drive, we'll use a 16 kilobyte cluster size. If it's bigger than 32 gigabytes, we'll use 32 kilobytes. So I'm just gonna set mine to 16 kilobytes here. Again, we can give it a label. So I'm just gonna use this as test two. And once we've done that, we can just say, okay, for that. So you can see now that we have our operation, our job list here. So we're going to clean the entire disk of all of its partitions and then create a new partition on there, which is going to be our FAT32. And you can see down here, it's telling me that that's what it's going to do. So once I'm happy that that's all going to be performed on disk number four, which is my USB drive, I can apply that. Again, it warns us that we're going to um, delete everything on there um, and that will then just run through. So at this point, all of our jobs are done. And you can see it here, we now have no jobs pending and our disk four is now formatted as FAT32.
So that is that um, partition manager then completely cleaning and formatting our drive and allowing us then more control over how we do that, setting up our FAT32 with the correct cluster size. So that really gives you all the information you need to format and prepare any USB drive or SD card that you happen to have so that you can then use it in your retro consoles. So if, if that's all you need to do, just then go ahead and do that. Um, if you do want to find out why we chose 16 kilobytes and what FAT32 is, then just hang on for the rest of this video and I'll just talk you through a brief overview of that technical details. So the FAT file system actually dates back to the original MS-DOS floppy drive systems. Now these used a file allocation table, hence the FAT, to specify and control how the data was organized on the drive surface. So as this format was the basis for all disk drives uh, before any newer formats were created, it's still used then as the default fallback option by most systems. So this makes it almost universally compatible with all devices. And that's especially true then of the retro consoles that we're going to want to use our storage media in. Now the format is built around the way that data is stored on magnetic media. So the original magnetic based drives, um, they had a magnetic surface which was divided up into small sections called sectors. Now each of these sectors could store 512 bytes of data. The FAT system then used a counter to number these sectors. So this counter used a fixed size integer register, which internally then allowed it to address each of these sectors on the disk surface. So the number that we see after the FAT part of our format then tells us how big that register is. So our FAT32, um, the, the sector counter then is 32 bits wide. So if we think about a 512 byte sector, this gives us a maximum addressable space of our 512 bytes times two to the power of 32, which then if we, if we, if we multiply that out and then divide it down, we eventually get to um, say that that actually comes out at two terabytes. So this is a two terabyte limit that you'll quite often see mentioned for FAT32 drives in your retro consoles. And this, of course, then is the maximum limit of size for any particular disk partition. Now, when a computer is actually working with these drive sectors, it tends to block them together into allocation units or clusters. So instead of accessing each sector individually, it works at the cluster level, so it can pull larger blocks of data from the storage in single goes then to improve drive performance. So these clusters tend to be powers of two groups of sectors. So we have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and 128. Now if you, if you think about then our 512 byte sectors, if we multiply those out then, that gives us cluster sizes of 512 bytes, 1K, 2K, 4, 8, then our 16 and 32 kilobytes, and also 64 kilobytes. And these are the values that, of course, you'll then see listed in your disk formatting tools. Now, in reality, you can really use whatever cluster size you want, but this will actually affect the performance of the drive. So most formatting tools will select the best, or what they usually call the default cluster size for the size of your USB or SD card. But um, again, I, I tend to find then if we use um, 16 kilobytes cluster size for drives less than 32 gigabytes and 32 kilobytes then for any larger drives, um, and that's what most um, of the hacking systems will, will advise, then that, that works pretty much without any issue. So I hope that's given you a bit of information into how to create your FAT32 drives and then a bit of technical background as to what the format is and why we choose certain values. So if you've enjoyed the video and you find it useful, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't start me started messing around with some retro consoles, then please do check out my videos on how to hack various things like your Xbox 360, PS3 and various handhelds. So. I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, 
and visit my website.